What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another IQ Community Devlog. Today, it is time for Devlog Week 22. On Monday, the 2nd of November 2020, I started off doing something I wanted to do for, I don't know, forever, which is building a spleef arena. You know the Oso oh classic game which has existed for I don't know how long since the beginning of Minecraft, where you have to mine blocks underneath your opponent's feet to make them fall off the arena. Now the arena I'm going to build is a bit of a different arena compared to normal spleef, cause normal spleef is BORING! So the reason why my arena is going to be special is because we are going to use redstone dividers to divide the arena up into smaller sections if we want to, so we can customize the arena size to whatever we like fit, and this way we can create custom competitions between different teams or between different duos in smaller arenas, or we can create one giant arena and battle each other to the death this way. But in order to create all of those redstone dividers, I needed a lot of honey blocks and slime, but I didn't have any honey blocks, so I created this little temporary bee farm, and it has worked pretty well. I've gotten all of my honey from this automated farm, and I think I'm going to replicate it as well in my main base in the future. So those out there with the big eyeballs will probably be wondering why Lucas and I are floating within this video without our armor and things on, and that is because I used quick mode to render out this video instead of standard mode in the replay mod for the time lapse. So it looks like we are playing in creative while in fact we are playing in survival and you can see the difference in the next clip, but I also turned on shaders right there. I don't know about you, but man oh man oh man, doesn't these shaders make this time lapse look freaking amazing? God damn! In the future, I will definitely record all of the other time lapses with shaders as well, because it just looks freaking awesome. And if I forget to do that, then write down in the comment section below that I'm a freaking idiot for forgetting to turn on shaders, and I will give you a ticket to the IQ community server, where you can play with us for the rest of your life. Yeah! As you already know, the floor of the Spleef Arena is made out of snow blocks, and our Spleef Arena was freaking huge, so we had to gather shit ton loads of snowballs first, before we could create enough snow blocks for the entire arena. But luckily Lucas created a little snow farm that we could use for gathering all of these snowballs. And in the end it took us about 45 minutes and an entire double chest full of iron shovels to gather enough snowballs. To create all of these snow blocks for the half of the arena so we weren't even finished then. So it took a freaking long time. So for those who haven't noticed yet, it is already Tuesday, the 3rd of November of 2020, the second day of this devlog. And as you can see, I am back again over at the Spleef Arena, doing some more boring work, which is of course placing down Snowblock, which everyone likes doing, yay! And as you can see, Lucas wasn't helping me out this time because he had school and I did not because I quit my study so I could play Minecraft instead, yeah! yeah. Just to clarify, by the way, that is not the reason I quit my study. Liar. So after working on the Spleef Arena for two days straight, I was getting quite bored with it, so I started doing something else instead, which was back over at the base. The main base, the big base of the Mesa Biome, which is of course my storage system in the middle of the ocean, which is actually not inside of the Mesa Biome, but that's besides the point. Anyway, I started working on the interior decoration of the storage system, because it is looking quite lacking at this point in time, and I wanted to add in something new, get some sort of a built palette going on so I could build off that in the future and as you can see I'm using some dark oak logs mixed in with spruce and a dark prismarine and as you can see everything is starting to tie together quite nicely especially with all the lanterns and the rest of the blocks as well but I am far from being finished because I ran out of dark prismarine midway which is why I had to continue another project on the server, which is of course the Guardian Farm, where I can get all of the drops so I can create some more Dark Prismarine for my storage system. Anyway, what my personal slave Lucas and I were doing was removing about 10 blocks measured from the highest point of the ocean floor, because we needed a lot of space for the Guardian Farm in there, of course. And I had no idea what kind of Guardian Farm I was going to build. I have built one Guardian Farm before in my entire lifetime, but that one didn't work anymore in this version of Minecraft, so I had to come up with something else instead. And instead of watching all of these super cool farms that are out there on the internet, I tried designing my own, and you can guess how it went, of course. 
it went absolutely freaking good which is of course what i was telling myself at that point in time but the reality was of course the opposite because i had created a total shit show and let me explain to you why after lucas and i are done with killing all of these mobs in these caves <laughs> So the first step I did wrong was to create the guardian farm in a 45 degree rotated cube shape because it looks visually interesting, but functionally it is not working as well as you might think, cause you can't create water streams which funnel down into one central point in the middle as you're placing down all of the water sources in a diagonal line, creating one giant infinite water source up above where you want water streams instead, so then all of the guardians won't get funneled down into a collection point. Now the next thing I did wrong, which is possibly more stupid than creating the farm in an impossible shape, was filling up the guardian farm with water before even creating a collection system, which meant that the baby booms of guardians started spawning in a little small pocket of water, as that is the only place where all of the guardians could spawn, and that resulted in about 50 guardians trying to kill me constantly, and making matters even worse, all of the water inside the farm was on top of a soul sand layer, making my entire PC lag out because of all of the bubble particles from the soul sand. And in the end, I had a very difficult time killing all of the guardians with 10 FPS, and I got killed as well a couple of times, which made me lose my netherite helmet, and up to this day, I am still quite sad about that. So I said to myself, F the shit, I'm getting rid of this whole farm over here. So I started removing all of the water again from the guardian farm. And in the end, I realized how much time I just wasted by creating this. And a day after, I started designing a new design in the creative world of the server. And in there, I did do a little bit of planning. And this build that I am emptying right now has made me realize that planning is a very good component before doing it, actually. And also making sure that you do things in the right order, otherwise you'll get yourself killed, just like me. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's about it for this week's IQ Community Devlog. Please like if you haven't already, and subscribe while you edit if you don't want to miss the future episodes of the IQ Community server. Have a nice day, and as always, I'll see you in another video.